Let's see. I might need to move, right. move this over. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. There All we right. go. Sorry. Yeah. Well, people still gonna no see worries, my doors no and stuff. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. All right, folks, uh, we're live on the dev stream. My name is Nick Taylor. I am a, a lead software engineer here at Forum. Forum is the software that powers dev. Um, Christina is here today, but uh, she's having some internet issues. Uh, so she's gonna be in the chat. She might pop on here at some point, uh, but just in case you're wondering where she's disappeared to. Uh, regardless, I'm super stoked to have Jerome Hardaway on the stream today. Jerome, thanks so much for taking the time to come talk with us today. Um, I guess, uh, why don't we just start off with like uh, a bit about yourself and then uh, we'll riff from there and see what happens. I'll be that. Uh, that's the best way these things go. So uh, a little bit about me. My name is Jerome Hardaway. Duh. Uh, I was formerly U.S. Air Force, uh, Security Forces. Uh, did some work, um, some really crazy things while enlisted. Uh, transitioned out of uh, the military and found a hard time finding a conventional job during the height of recession. So um, I actually transitioned into software engineering due to the recession and, you know, saw this, the skill based job that I could be in air conditioning and uh, not get shot at. And I was like, I never looked back. Right? It's the most awesome thing ever. And uh, <laughs> so after that, I started vet to code and I focus on teaching veterans how to write software for free uh, from the comfort of their homes using modern technologies like Zoom and Slack to meet up and, you know, just, you know, push things to GitHub. And so far we've helped over um, seven, we helped over, uh, what is it, 278, or is it, two, yeah, 278 veterans. Uh, we've done $253 million in social impact in the country. We've started accepting allied forces uh, this year. Um, okay. we've, been doing a lot, we've done a lot of crazy things and we've done this all, you know, the help of our donors and sponsors. So just, you know, helping people build great things, uh, helping heroes build great things in code. That's what, you know, that's what we've been doing. No, that's awesome. And I mean, uh, uh, you founded it, right? Is that right? Yeah, founded it. Yeah. I, you know, there's a funny, yeah, I founded it because, you know, I was, in a position where people were asking for help and I was like the only person around that people thought could help, uh, which was kind of weird when you're like in your 20s, because uh, I was definitely like I was legit like I never forget the day I was legit trying to play hooky and like not be bothered with anything on that Friday. And that is not what happened um, in my life. Um, so I answered the call. Do I did the work. I do the work now, you know. It's crazy thinking about, I can't believe people asked to do this it was like 27, 28 to step up to the plate and do this type of stuff. But now when I look at myself versus like other VSOs and the work we do, you know, I yeah. find, you know, I'm the most you know qualified for this role. When you look at other veteran services organizations, it's usually a dude that's been in the military 20, 30 years um, yeah. or a civilian that never was in the military and they have like a bunch of degrees and, um, all types of craziness. And I'm like, I, I looked around, I was like, I'm the only SO leader that like looks and comes from the population that he impacts and helps, right? I'm the only person that was enlisted. And, yeah. you know, I didn't go to a fancy college and do any of that stuff. I'm like 20 years younger than my closest constituent, which is the weirdest thing about helping veterans and you get in these meetings and people literally think that, you know, you're the coffee guy, but because I'm in tech, I'm like, <laughs> no, I actually make as much, if not more money than you. Yeah. But I, yeah, that's nice, sir, <laughs> uh, with your shiny, like, general, like, and that's, but that's the most fun part. Like, I get to talk shit to generals, like, things <laughs> I would never do in, like, my military years. Like, I just be looking at people who are, um, you know, who would, 10, 12 years ago, like, rip me a new one. And be like, I really don't care <laughs> anything that you have to say, like, at this point. And that's the best part of my life, honestly, is, like, looking at four stars and not caring what they have to say. Uh, <laughs> so that's, awesome. that's where I'm at and, in my life. Right? Yeah. And, I mean, like, what you were saying, and I, I can – I totally get this. Like y you were, you were, you were abroad, you know what I mean? Like you, you went through these things that folks went through. So it's like, it's, you know, having that person with the degrees who never even, well, 
I'm not a gun person, but uh, I've, you know, never even touched a gun or whatever, been in, been in battle or whatever, you know, they, they can't relate at all, you know? They've never had family. They, they never had to do the transition, right? They had a cushy military pension or all this other stuff there, or, you know, they were officers, so they had this collegiate network already there. And when yeah. you're a first term troop who served six years or four years at the military, you know, I don't want to do 20 years of this, but I need to figure out what I'm going to do. And I don't want to do the big four, which is now you see they're uh, fired. They either try, when you get out now, they either try to put you in fire, uh, ambulance, cop, or cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is like the closest thing they try to push you towards being in tech as a military okay. person. Um, or they, you know, do what they try to do with me and try to send me back overseas. I'm like, oh, you do private military. I was like, you know, I'm not working for Blackwater. I'm good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. like when you're doing, you're in those type of situations, you're like, you know, when you're talking to people, they don't understand how, okay, I just don't want to do those things just because I was in the military and yeah. you have to, you know, part of it is education. I know all about all the people like, you know, Stan Lee, Bob Ross, uh, uh, Joe Simon, all the people that served in the military and they got out and they did absolutely nothing to do with the military. And they, you know, focus on creativity and things, right? Like, you know, the stories of how Bob Ross hated being a drill sergeant in the Air Force because, you know, he had to be this person that he wasn't. And so he would go home on lunch and, yeah. you know, he created the wet on wet, the wet on wet painting style to make paintings and like, you know, send them out. And the minute he got out, what did he do? He grew a weird afro and just talked <laughs> nicely on PBS for the next like 30 years. Like that's what, you know, those people exist in service every day. And that's like my mission. Yeah, yeah. Like I want to find the tech versions of Bob Ross, right? Yeah, no, for sure. I, I didn't realize that Bob Ross had served in the military because like- uh, I mean, US Air Force. Okay, yeah, that, no, that's super, super interesting because, you know, I've only ever seen it, like I, I saw him on PBS back in the day, like they do reruns. On, I don't know if it's still on Netflix now, but, you know, he obviously calm demeanor, just like, yeah, I'm just going to put a mountain up here, a little cloud. Yeah, it was actually being stationed to uh, in Alaska that inspired him to get serious about painting like mountains and outside and stuff, right? Or you know Stan yeah. Lee, he was in the uh, uh, he was in the uh, he was in the army. There was another gentleman that worked with uh, Stan Lee that was in the Coast Guard. But there was uh, the guy that created. Uh, I'm looking his name up right here. I promise you, I'm not doing anything. Nefarious, uh, Jack Kirby. Oh, That's what I keep. I don't know why I mess up Jack Kirby because, like, yeah, yeah. the whole Marvel Phase Four is based off of Jack Kirby's work for the most part, right? All of the, yeah. you know, the Eternals, the um, you have the Eternals, you have Thor. Those are all Jack Kirby's works. Like Jack Kirby yeah. and Stan Lee, and he was Navy. He was like he was in the military, and it was like super crazy because he used to say about how Stan Lee was the more pragmatic one, but Jack Kirby was the world creator, and he focused on like he loved the idea of bringing like theology and philosophy okay. into comics and things of that nature. And like it was, you know, him and Stan Lee were like, you know what? Well, you know, how that, that kind of like two minute conversation they had, they're like, we should probably just create the X Men or something like that. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. especially like, you know, when we they did a conversation about Stan Lee when he was like 90 something, and he okay. met up with Arnold Schwarzenegger and they came up with like a superhero kindergarten cartoon that's about to come up. And it took Stan Lee 45 seconds to come up with this cartoon. And that, you know, I, I don't, that's my mission. It's like, I don't want to be the person that looks at a veteran or a military person and be like, oh, you're only good for this, like, small window of things. Like, no, you're, you know, yeah, yeah. you can go out there, paint mountains, write software, you know, do UX. Like, my favorite, like, right now, favorite troop. Um, her name's Erin McKinney. UX. Loves UX. She knows how to code front end. Her primary love is in life is user experience and she was EOD and I was like why did you come like for you those of you who are on the stream have no idea what EOD is it's explosive ordnance disposal basically she finds bombs she blows them up and makes sure that no one else gets blown up by them 
uh, I asked her first, I was like, so why would you want to be ELD? And she was like, well, it was either learn how to defuse bombs or learn how to jump out of a plane. And I was like, I'm not doing that shit. So yeah, yeah, it yeah. was the bombs. I was like, oh, that's <laughs> that makes sense. I don't see as a person in the Air Force, I don't see the, the purpose of <laughs> jumping out of a perfectly good plane. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was like, yeah, I totally get it. I can, I, I, I'm there with you. We're simpatico on that. And then I was like, so, but why do you, why does UX speak to you? She was like, well, it has like that with UX, you get to practice the same constant feedback procedures that um, with EO, with like bomb disposal you have, it's just not as haptic. I was like, that is a very polite way of saying without things blowing up. <laughs> so <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know, it's just being able to like have these conversations and like that, like, yo, of course you could be UX. Who said that you can't be, you know, you can't do this stuff. And it's just hilarious. Like <laughs> being able to go to the, and talk to these people that have like really crazy backstories and then they tell me that i like colors and hex and all this other stuff and i'm like mm -hmm. you know or having you know right now uh, i have a special force i have uh, andrew who's a special forces candidate i have um he's a senior software engineer engineer but he was a uh, get this the dude he came to our program like years ago he was in greenland um when he first came through our program and he was there on a cheerleading contract. And he's one of the people who helped make cheerleading like get the okay to be an Olympic sport. He has an Olympic no way. Ring. That's yes, awesome. I like he was sitting there flexing on because everybody was, you know, because that's what <laughs> like veterans do when they're you know talking shit. Like they everybody was showing their medals and awards and stuff. And he just comes out with the ring and like, oh, we're done. Like no yeah, one like, has one of those. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like, I don't got one of those. Like um <laughs> <laughs> so it was like very, very funny. And, you know, he started in Greenland because he had a contract when he first started learning how to code, like to teach cheerleading in a foreign country. And this is a guy who was special forces. He was special operations and yeah. he didn't want to do anything closely at all related to like, you know, type of work once he got out. He wanted to do, you know, I'm going to go to another country and teach cheerleading and I'm going to, yeah. you know, learn how to code and all this other stuff. So that that's what we're that's who I'm here for. I'm for those guys and girls who want to um, want to make their lives, you know, better from the on, you know, the unmarketed path for veterans. Right. Because yeah. in the harsh reality, especially in America, we really don't get the type of res not I don't say respect, but type of value that we can mm -hmm. bring to the table. And people aren't talking about the type of benefits they can get from us. So it's very hard to be, you know, I'm in the room and, I, and people think that they're being, especially civilians, they always think they're being fluffy and stuff. And then between when the first 30 minutes, uh, when you're in the room with all the other, like the, uh, all the other code schools and stuff, you immediately yeah. start hearing about vet tech and uh, GI Bill. And the same way with like, cause like my wife, she's in real uh, in realty, uh, okay. where she works a big software company that does real estate. And it's like, oh, it's just like being dealing with realtors where like when the first five minutes, they're like, start talking about the VA loan. Like, oh, my value is only as important as my access to um, federal funded like money. And yeah. I know how that feels and veterans they're all like you know, it sucks and so you know when you're dealing with someone like me who you know what has walked your walk on your journey know how to be in the life know how hard it is and learn how to code while um actually carrying a job or you know dealing yeah. with family newborns you know i'm like i'm about to have a baby in october i'm like i'm asking students for advice because i'm like i have yeah, no yeah. idea what i'm doing at all <laughs> so <laughs> like, I am lost. You see me I'm on Twitter. I'm like, what books did y'all read? Is there an audio book? Like, is there a class? Or like, is there like, I know they got money in me stuff. What's a daddy in me thing? Like, where's <laughs> can someone cliff note? Where's the matrix where's the matrix button? Yeah, right? yeah. Where, like, where's the know, cheat sheet? <laughs> yes. And everybody's like, I got nothing for you. Yeah. It's good that you're asking, but you yeah, know, yeah. you're you're well, out of luck, but partner. Yeah, I have I have two daughters. I mean, they're older now, but um, whatever. Whenever somebody says like, "Do you have any advice?" Like the advice I have is like, 
no kid is the same. So like, it's like if I gave you advice, it might not even work for your kid. But hey, I mean, that's even more like, oh, feed it. Those that like, that's a definite thing you have to do. Beyond yeah, yeah, yeah. that, I don't have anything for you. <laughs> but I know yeah, you. Mean, like, I learned a month ago <laughs> that you can't. You have to like slowly introduce solid food to babies. You just can't go from like bottled yeah, yeah. chicken wings. I was like, wait, that's new. I was like. I was looking forward to the day I could like I was I had a whole Twitter <laughs> like my, my Twitter just blew up like so when can I give this little dude like chocolate? They were like hopefully never. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. Like they're like why would you want to give a kid sugar? Because I want to enjoy like my first Reese's peanut butter cup with this guy. And they're <laughs> like no no don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no it's yeah you know there's there's the standard stuff like uh, learning it's interesting to learn how to change a diaper like in different places like if you have a change table that's one thing but you know like if you're doing it in a car or somewhere you know like you, you get pretty like, good at doing it fast you know you're just like see i'm, I'm about to start practicing that because we you know we're yeah, like yeah. at the halfway point uh point so it's like i need to start practicing diaper stuff right and like they have these like this military dad company and they have like yeah. these like MRE dad deploy packs like you just snap it open and there's like a diaper and there's wipes and all this other stuff I'm like I'm telling everybody like no I need those that's what I need I need a thing that I can yeah, grab yeah. and I can just deploy so <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's like yo you love me buy me that like uh, don't oh, yeah, like help sure. make this job easy for me so yeah H having said that I do have two pieces of advice, which are generalized advice, but take a baby CPR course, uh, like here in Canada, at least like it, you don't pay for these things. It's just like they offer it at the hospital, but, uh, that, and what was the other thing? Oh yeah. Make sure uh, to get used to loud noises. Cause I know people who tried to make everything quiet and it ruins things later on because if a pin drops your kid just wakes up so you know my my kid was like i don't know we were blaring i don't know iron maiden metallica or something and uh you know they slept like a baby you know it's it's when it's like a library that's when they wake up so <laughs> so make the, you know make the baby accustomed to loud noises and get baby yeah, yeah. cpr i don't know uh, I'm gonna wife with this with this advice. And she's gonna love her. She's gonna love the baby CPR one. She's gonna hate the second one. And she's gonna look at both of us. And I'm gonna blame you 100. Okay, okay. No, it's okay. baby. I would never come up with that. <laughs> but yeah, you're in Canada, a, so. so some random dude in Canada told me to do it. So just blame Canada. <laughs> As I'm gonna be like, yeah, some Canadian yeah. guy told me that. So, sorry. <laughs> No, no. Uh, before we go on, because you were talking about Stan Lee and stuff, so I, I used to collect comics, so I have like all these. That's know. so awesome. I, mean, I think that's, that's, that's the coolest part about his job is like, because I talk about the comics and I, I try to bring my whole self into the industry because harsh reality of being a veteran is that the veteran experience is pretty much put through the lens of the stuff that sells the most. So you, most people don't know anything about veterans between the stuff they see on like in movies where everybody's getting shot or the horror shows you see when during giving, uh, during giving season, season or doing anything else where like, oh, everybody has PTSD. So everybody thinks that yeah. everybody's, you know, getting shot and everybody has PTSD. I'm like, all right, that's very extreme. Yeah. A lot of space in the middle. Like, yes, people have PTSD, people have uh, post-traumatic stress in general. Uh, they don't have to go through war to get that. They go through that to get, they get that from other things. Yeah. And like, people are still like more than that, right? There are people with PTSD that I met, a, I never forget when I was doing work with the VA, how I met a guy who he had post-traumatic stress, but he was like one of the smartest, like, people I met in my life like he had he'd been like he was in an IED accident but he knew .NET he knew Python he knew Golang he knew all these things and he was showing me how he worked a, you know a computer and he was he was actually showing me I never forget because he was showing me Ruby code on a computer and on a, on a Windows machine I don't think I could think about was just how horrible 
Ruby is on a Windows machine, <laughs> and this like disabled veteran is doing Ruby on a Windows machine. Like that's the only thing that came to my mind. It's like Ruby and Windows need to get themselves together because like they do not love each other <laughs> at all. And I was like, oh, no. Like it was, I was just astounded. He wasn't complaining or anything. I was complaining for him. Like this is like, let's get this man back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause the, well, because because the the forum code base the back ends Rails, so if you are on Windows, you got to use WSL. There's there's no other way to do it. You have to be on a Linux based machine. But uh, so he toughed it out though. Sounds good. My first my first uh, job was Ruby on Rails, and it was on a um, it was on a Windows machine because they basically they they did some petty stuff at the company where they got the setup that the guy before me wanted versus asking okay. me what was my preferred setup. And it was a nightmare. It was like, I, like, and this was before WSL. So you either had to do a virtual machine or you had to dual okay. boot it. Like, I was like, this is horrible. I would just throw the whole machine away. Like <laughs> even now, like that's one of like, and I mind you, I work at Microsoft and like my, my <laughs> manager, he brought up something about working on a, um, on a Windows machine. I was like, Oh God, no, don't, please don't make me. <laughs> I, that's how I like, I'm so shell shocked. Like I'm still like, no, please don't do that to me. I'll do anything. I'll take a deduction and pay. I'll like move. <laughs> I'll do anything. Just don't put me on a Windows machine. And he just laughed. He was like, I, I was a slip of the tongue. I apologize. <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, I, I think nowadays they probably have a change of heart. Cause like I, I used to work in .NET until about 2016. And this was the .NET core now. <clears throat> I don't know if you do any .NET, what you're doing these days, but uh, .NET core, it's, it's, it's works on Linux and Mac now. But back in the day, it was just, just Windows machine, uh, so you were kind of tied to that machine, you know. But uh, I, I think because I know there's other people at Microsoft. I'm not positive, but I think Scott Hanselman might have a Mac, or could be wrong. I think I'm pretty sure he has an iPhone. He doesn't have a he doesn't have a Zoom player or a Windows phone. <laughs> I'm gonna ask Scott. Yeah, I know Scott for a fact. Like he has an iPhone. Like matter of fact, I was Scott. Uh, like I'm gonna go and I'm gonna text Scott right now. Like wondering if you have an iPhone. <laughs> Scott, we're live. I need to know. I need to know. The crowd demands it. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well, 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 this would be like a question mark. Like, what the hell are you talking about, Jerome? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I wanna, I wanna talk about you at Microsoft in a bit, but I, I, I kind of wanna dig into a bit into Vetsu Code because like you, you have you've talked quite a bit about it and i can tell you're you're really proud of the work you've done there because you've highlighted a lot of i'm not proud of the work i've done like just because there's so much work to do it's just I'm proud of every veteran that we help right because i know how hard it is to get in this industry and i know like this industry <laughs> he said live yeah i told you he's like what the, what the hell is Rob talking about um uh, it is I know how hard it is, it is in this industry, and I, you know, I call it the, um, you know how we have uh, Schroeder, Schroeder's cat, or like, you know, is yeah. it in a box, it's not a box? Like, I, you know, I call it the Avengers protocol. Like, you know, we had an issue where, you know, you look at Avengers or Thor, Thor and Loki, they yeah. tear up the town, and then they're like, you know what, we gotta use a Tesseract to like build weapons, so this stuff doesn't happen. And then, of course, you know, comes, all this stuff. And Samuel Jackson tells Thor, it's your fault while we, you know, try to do this because, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you know, you like tore through a city like tissue paper. And then he's <laughs> like, well, you guys have invited a uh, court, another, you guys are courting a higher level award. Well, I feel like that with tech yeah. in regards to, you know, we are our own worst enemy. The more accessible we seem to make learning how to code, for everyday people, the yeah. harder the the, the goalpost moves on the hiring side, and that's what I've noticed in my in my years in this. Like you know, I suddenly do to get to the same goal that I have that I had achieved. You had to know, you know, you have to know more. And I'm like, yeah. why is that? Particularly where when you once you go into these locations and these places, 
stack is not maturing at the level of the demand of what we're asking for juniors, entry level devs to be knowledgeable. And, you know, and that's super weird for me, right? Like, I'm because I, I, I deal with, I've been doing this for six years. So I'm looking into these industries. I'm like, you know what? It doesn't even make any sense. Like, why is it that we're making it harder for junior level and entry level developers for stacks that aren't maturing at the rate that, you know, technology is mm-hmm. maturing? Like, your people's production stack, like the way, the way we're making the hiring process, you would assume that people's production stacks were, um, evolving at the rate that you know technology is on outside, but that's just not true. They're just you know they have created a higher level of gatekeeping, I guess, and that's what I you know that's what why I'm I applaud every veteran anyone that gets a job, especially now during pandemic, because uh, right now if you're an entry level or junior level, you have to essentially be you have to essentially be like a mini dev rail for yourself. Yeah. In which you have to really sell yourself. It's not just, you know, doing code put on GitHub. You have to be out there talking about it, building your projects, blogging. You have to do that stuff because what companies have decided, because I actually, I spoke to a company last week and found out they had 200 entry-level roles just in backlog. They weren't even thinking about um, bringing open and hiring for until the pandemic was over. They There's that and tra- that's why I like one of the things I tell people is to you know start taking pictures of your like of your stack or talk about how you get ready of your uh, workspace and how you're ready for your day and stuff. Like bring as much as you as you can to the internet when it comes to the job, because they're like, well, we don't have that social equity, that trust with those entry levels, so we're just gonna wait till we can bring them in office where we can keep an eye on them. And it's not you know we don't have to get like. Know, invasive software and all this other stuff that you know causes problems that people are like, yeah, it's kind of creepy uh, that you're doing that. Um, so they just said, uh, you know, we're just not going to hire right now on that level, and then we're going to pay if you've been look if you've been paying attention to Q1 at least of 2021. Um, we're just going to pay uh, seniors what they're asking plus like 25 to 50 percent more yeah. every senior like the senior software the senior software engineer market and the real estate market are like literally like mirroring themselves where okay. if you have if you have at least one or two years worth of experience or you have it's the same as if you already have a house and you put it on the market you put yourself on the yeah. market you're going to get 20 30 thousand dollars more then you know, like and be willing to if you're a junior just like if you're a person looking for a house you're gonna have to do like double the amount of work versus yeah. like a person like who who already who's a senior right like i was on both sides of that with the housing and play market like we were having to put um 20 30 40 over asking and then when i sold my old house you're like oh yeah, we're just gonna give you you know sixty thousand dollars extra just so you i was like wow that's insane why like what happened here because of how the market is during the pandemic right so same way when i think about like the uh with juniors like you have to think of it like that like you're gonna have to do right now if you want a job you're gonna have to do double triple of what you have to do normal market will the market correct itself Yes. Oh, is the uh, are we coming to the end of the tunnel? Yes. But your two options are either wait till we start getting back in office, and then wait till those three to six months where people start finding their groove. Uh, you can either like you know Q1 2022, or you have to do that two to three times work right now. Like there's no way around it, right? I have to. I tell people like my job, part of being Captain America is I have to look at the world the way the world is, and then try to make it better incrementally and while saying it's not right i'm like all right i see the work and perseverance that we have to do and that's what we have to do so you know like one thing i have been instructing people when it comes to getting um jobs out there now it's like okay stop focusing so much on the technical challenge part of like doing like algorithmic like code challenges because like that you're because i've seen that i've seen a lot of people they're doing the bulk of their work on the code challenge part but they don't have the social equity they don't have the level of trust to even get their like resume past the box yeah. right and they're not building the relationships to help them and right now the internet is everybody's relationship i'm like so you know 
you know how to do Instagram, you know how to do Twitter, you know how to do um, LinkedIn, uh, which is weird thing to say because if I don't put the same amount of value of LinkedIn on a junior or entry level engineer that I do uh, for a senior. When you're a senior, yeah. LinkedIn helps a lot more. But when you're a junior, Twitter is where it's at. Like for me, Twitter is where it's at. If you know how to take any level of a good Instagram picture, I think Instagram is going to become the new spot because like I follow a lot of people that know how to make like those, they know how to make infographics. Everybody like Canva has to be making a killing because people are doing that work like well. And I'm just sitting there like I'm literally getting notification. I sign up for your notifications and everything on Instagram because I just want to see how people are using Instagram to like drive their tech career. And I'm seeing a lot of juniors, especially those on the front end. They're using, they're migrating to Instagram, showing their work, um, giving tips, and they're, you know, it's it's a beautiful thing to see people using these platforms in different ways. And you know, GitHub, like full disclosure, I'm a GitHub star, and I do work for the company that owns that company. So like, I don't like take it for granted salt. But before, I was the hugest fan of GitHub stuff and what they were doing. Um, yeah. In your work learning in public, that's the biggest secret. Like if GitHub was like with your especially right now, like the GitHub dev two and then having your own website, right? So like one of one of the easiest things I tell people, right? Ev, um, start blogging on dev two on practical dev, right? Yeah. Have your uh, GitHub set up. Make a GitHub action you know, for your blog when you write something on dev two and you push it on pub you publish, have a GitHub action and write that code and have it push to your blog. Now it's at two yeah. places. You're getting that SEO push because it's on two different, it's on two different places. SEO long form content still wins on the internet. Like vir vir virality works, but there's a reason why Twitter makes sure that your tweets are uh, being picked up by bots, right? Cause yeah, SEO yeah. still is king, right? So, you know, that's one thing that I continuously and consistently push on people. Like SEO is still there. It's your rocks long form oh, yeah, content sure. still wins. Video might be more fun and engaging, but you have to, when you search for something, you have to tap to go see the videos. The, all the yeah. written stuff is first and foremost because it's still like text is still king. Like people still read um, oh, yeah. for right now. Anyway, like we're not in an idiot idiocracy anytime soon. We kind of, we, we dodged that bullet, thank God. Uh, <laughs> that's a great, that's a great movie, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I know you Canadians, y'all are like, I don't know if the Americans are wild. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's like, yo, I have because I have a bunch of international friends here from military days. So now we get random like WhatsApp messages from guys I served with like in like Australia. I, I served with Australian forces in Iraq, and they were like, yo, like, are y'all okay? Blink twice if you need to be bugged <laughs> out. I was like, <laughs> like, you know, when Australians are worried about the black guy, you have a problem. So, <laughs> um, that That's a great quote. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's I was getting some of the most random, oh, like, I am. It's like, yo, like, yo. Y'all are bugging. Are you okay? <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry, that all topic. But yeah, I so like, I try to tell okay. people like, like that learning in public as a junior and pushing that stuff out constantly is what's going to help your career right now. You have to like, you don't have to be on Angie Jones level and straight up like harsh reality when it comes to DevRel is like, if it's not Angie or Nader, Everybody else, it's like Angie and Nader, and then it's everybody else. Like, or no, Angie, Nader, Jason, and Cassidy. Yeah. I give those four. They're the goats. Yeah. Like, they're the four horsemen. And then it's <laughs> like everyone else. Don't I don't even care about anyone else in the game. Like, those are the, those are the big four. Those are the juggernauts. Like Cassidy, she can do it all. She can code well. She can make it unclear that even a five-year-old can understand it. She can make you laugh while doing it. Like Angie, like. I don't understand how Angie doesn't get her flowers the way that Angie should. Cause like, and like, yo, Angie is like, she's African American female who has like, in like in charge of like been the person that a billionaire listens to about technical like decisions. Yeah. Like who, like, can we like shut up and wait for her? Like, I have never had a billionaire <laughs> listen to me for shit. So like, that's pretty cool. Like, Hey, yo, you know, 
that billionaire is like, Angie, what do you think? And Angie's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, 26 patents. And, and everybody's like, oh, she's just a normal person. I'm like, normal my ass. That's a superhero. Like, go and give her an iron suit so she can go and fix some of this stuff. Where it's like, can we, like, uh, make her an Avenger? Like, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say, speaking of Avengers, she she had a she tweeted out uh, which banana would you eat yesterday and uh, saw well, Mark uh, the, incre the incredible hope <laughs> answered he's uh, yeah. <laughs> I said I I'm banana number 9 as well I said go avengers assemble but uh About time. Yeah. like that was a wild tweet <laughs> all I all I learned is that half of the people that I used to respect are savages and I no longer respect. That's why I say use. Like, oh, like y'all like the people were like, oh, like eleven or twelve? I was like, yeah, hurt yeah, you yeah. as a child. Like, seriously, who hurt you? Like, that's not people shouldn't eat those. That's banana bread and smoothie. Like, once you got that's past nine, yeah, banana yeah, yeah. bread and smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you are eating those, that means, like, you had a rough childhood <laughs> and you need therapy and a hug, like, straight up. And I don't care, like, they can at me. Like, yeah, bro, just say I need a therapy and a hug. I'm probably right, though. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, speaking of those four, though, like, I swear to God, I think, like, Angie, Jason, Cassidy, and, and Natter, they could probably read a back of a shampoo bottle to me and I'd be like, wow, that's super interesting. You know, they're, they're just, know. they're yeah. really good. Like, uh, and, and they, they also put out really great content as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, what was I gonna say? We were talking about the Avengers and then- It's a couple oh, the jobs. We just did back yeah, yeah. and forth and enjoying it. Yeah, no, it's all good, it's all good. Um, yeah, I, so I guess like for the for the job hunt, like, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Uh, I definitely agree with you. You do have to promote yourself, and it, it's it's kind of unfortunate, but that just seems to be the way it is these days. I don't think it's unfortunate. I think that's one of the biggest issues with tech and networking, as like what we currently see it. People treat networking the same way that people treat sales and promotion. It's all interchangeable, and I think it's all like bad or dirty work. But I'm like, no, it's not. Networking is literally just making friends in the industry that you want to make money in. Like we all spend, we literally all spend money on the exact same dumb crap. Like we all like everybody in tech went through the keyboard phase during the pandemic. You know who didn't go through the tech keyboard phase during the pandemic? My wife. Want to know why? Because she's an ops and she doesn't give a shit about her keyboard. So like, she she's like, what? <laughs> she's like, you did not spend that much money on a keyboard just because it colors and it clicks. Like, you're five. Like, I have lost two points of respect for you. Like, get out of here. I was like, really? Like, but like, have a baby with me, baby. Like, come on. <laughs> so it was like hilarious. Um, it, let's see what other things like hot sauce with boss hot sauce like everybody loves in our community loves hot sauce you have share she loves hot sauce you have wes you have i mean we argue about who's like you, jason angie myself we are uh, and uh it's, um sarah yeah and we're all arguing about gonna make the best burger so we all love food we all love keyboards love all all love hot sauce so it's just making friends in the places where you know y'all are gonna spend the same money on dumb stuff anyway so like that's it promotion is like for me promotion is i'm telling you the telling everyone about the work that i'm proud of because i know that this work i only because i know how hard i invest how much i invested in this work not only um I just know, I also know how, um, you know, how impactful my work is, right? So, like, that's how I look at it. I see the hours, of, like, I, the iceberg effect is real. People are only going to see the highlight reel of what you're doing. So, like, when people, like, see the, when people see the um, aspect of, like, oh, how good Vets of Code is done, or how, what type of crazy stuff, that's only the tip of the iceberg. I see all the crazy stuff that goes below. And I want to make sure you see all the crazy stuff that goes below. I want you to I want to be able to talk to you about social enterprise as a uh, as a service type deal, right? Like how to build an affordable social enterprise using Jamstack technologies. I want to when I like when I first joined Practical Dev, I was like, oh yo, this is gonna be nice because it just if like I tell my troops, they're like, oh, should I go on this one or should I go on this one? I'm like, well, this one is the one where the only people 
on it is us. Right. So you're not fighting the noise from all the marketing people and all the thought leaders from other places. You are you're not going to have to compete with Mark Cuban on Dev, on Practical Dev because he's not on there. Right. So no one cares about Mark Cuban. It's all tech stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that's where I would write. Like I write on Practical Dev because I know the only people that are writing on here and talking on here are people who are thinking about code. So like, let me go, let me write where the coders are, right? So and it's like, oh, it's not promotion. It's kind of like, I call it, I don't even think of it as promotion. I think of it as breadcrumbing, right? Like it's about starting a conversation that helps someone else, right? You're helping companies solve their problem anyway, because they got to hire somebody. If you make it as easy, why not you take their money and make it easy for them to not have to go through the interviewing process? I've had so many people who have done all the work up front of like getting, you know, when it comes to promotion and stuff where they get to skip interviews because, oh, you know, that guy had to go through five, but you only had three because you answered questions they already had. They already knew from reading your blog how technical you were and how you solve problems or why you solve problems. They know your passion. They know how much you're thinking, you know, that's where that's the why behind it. Right. So. I don't look at it as bad because um, if you're doing it right, you're keeping your the more you do it. And if you do it correctly, the less work you have to do in the interview phase as a person who does this stuff all the time. Right. And who's you know, I'm one of the few. No, I think I'm the only software engineer who's also on the nonprofit side who's in this like, you know, I'm in this battle with you. So I know I'm not telling you what I think. I'm not some, you know, dude who's like a CEO of some boot camp. I'm telling you what I've experienced in my own life as a person who constantly writes code, constantly writes on shows and stuff. They know how I step through and solve problems. They can ask me these questions or they can just go read a blog and they can, you know, I can answer these questions. Right. So that helps me like get the job faster or get to the interview phase faster. That helps me in situations where they're like, you know what? We're not going to have to go through so many things because we can already a answer these questions right here because he literally has product that's live and he's impacting people every day. So we know what this person's chops are on these things and we can see where we can grow and go from there. Right. So that's what you're doing. You're pretty much it's like if you were dating and you knew everything you could know about this person and know like your chances of getting like and know this person for years or like this person you would versus like oh i got on this blind date and i got on three blind dates to figure out what's this what's the real crazy that this person has right now you're like oh if i could just go on one and a half dates and figure out this is a go no go this is you know that's pretty awesome right right like i know that coinbase would never hire me because I have never been the type of guy that looked at a CEO's bank account and I'm like, well, I'm not going to challenge this guy because like I've been in a situation where people throw bullets at me. And I'm like, yeah, you know, Coinbase CEO is kind of an asshole and he doesn't like being challenged like that. So <laughs> like he's not accustomed to that world of where people he's not, he's, you know, he's a 38 year old billionaire. He's never been in a situation where I mean, he's, and he's anti BLM, alleged, like from what the media says. So he's never been in a situation where, you know, a black guy doesn't care about anything he has to say. So it'd be kind of fun to be in a room with him, but I, he would never hire me. So that would never happen. But yeah, I also know like places like Microsoft, they absolutely love me. Right. Because like a Jerome, he, you know, he's about DNI. He's about the love of the things we care about. Right. Which is work. He loves serviceless technologies. But more important than Jerome's entire focus. Uh, his past six years when it came to code was helping people get jobs. And at the end of the day, Microsoft is their core of their business. Their core businesses is all about, you know, it's all surrounded about work, particularly in like high level knowledge worker space, right? From the Microsoft Office suite to uh, Teams to GitHub to LinkedIn. Like then you have like Xbox, that's, you know, play X uh, arena. But then you, like I said, when you think of it you now, so many other products are focused towards the craft of work. And like, oh, this dude, he lives, he's been, that's where he's been at forever, right? So like they love it, right? That's the, yeah, that's, that makes sense, right? So like Coinbase yeah. is saying no, Microsoft is like, yeah, we love you. Come on, like, let's go. So, but that's how you do that. And it helps, you know, helps make craft 
easier, right? Like I have I have a Stephen Clark, Steve Clark. This is like my favorite like story of like how something like things just work. And that's another thing like when I see veter um not veterans and just the vets, but just junior entry level developers do things that don't you know, they 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 hard themselves by the job. Um, yeah. right. Steve, it took him a long time to get to a road of job, but I'm like, when he got the job, it was a perfect job for him, right? So yeah. Steve, he's a retired Marine. He has a farm. Like when I say farm, I mean pickles and geese and chickens and ducks and goats and all this other stuff. I'm like, yo, that is wild, bro. <laughs> like, like you have yeah. and, and you have a wife and a family and stuff, and you like to do motocross. Like, all right, when do you when are you behind a computer? He's like, I do that stuff to recharge my brain for the computer. I'm like, all right, cool, I understand. So, in this we're in this uh, this journey, and like one thing he has, like he likes making these like pickles that he likes cr taking cucumbers, turning them in pickles, and making them super spicy. And during the pandemic, he had this company that he made using code with Gat that we were teaching him uh, with Gatsby, and he actually wrote an he wrote an API for, that used U.S. Postal uh, Service uh, original work, but he made another layer on top of it to make it easier to send packages out. And okay. he created this company called AngryPickles.com, right? And he sold out over the summer. Like West Boss bought some, everybody bought Angry Pickles. Like right? I even bought. Bought two of them because pickles are. Uh, I did learn that angry pickles on hot chicken probably not good. You kind of just want like a plain pickle when it comes to hot chicken because yeah. spicy pickles, hot chicken. You're like, yo, this is a bad three day experience. So <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I don't. I'm not. I'm straight up not having a good time. Uh, <laughs> so like yeah. we, but he was growing these and building this stuff and he ended up getting like somebody just slid in my DMs like, yeah, you got any troops? There'll be, we had a troop fall through an intern, uh, a junior fall through an internship at growers. And, you know, I would like to see if you have anybody available. Like, I have the perfect guy for you. It's like, cause he was like, he had all these, like, it had to be like within 50 miles of this, like, wait, South Carolina, this person's in South Carolina. I, this person is perfect for you. He loves farming. He does all this stuff. I was like, yo, you had to target him. Like, <laughs> and now he just went from, he went from intern there and he was like, okay, yeah. so are you going to make me full time? They're like, you know what? Give us another month. We're going to put you on contract for a month and then we'll see. Did that. Now he's a full time engineer there. And he was like, that's awesome. And I'm sitting there like, dude, like, can we talk for a moment about how you're at the perfect job for you as a developer? Like, there's no one who knows the hardship of people that grow shit better than you. Yeah. But suck at this job because I don't care about you know, my I guess close farming is Kroger, right? I'm at Kroger. So uh, that is my, like but this that is perfect for you. Am I breaking up? Am I lagging? Yeah, it is saying that I'm doing. And now it's up. I don't know what's going on. Hey. Uh, no worries. Cool. Uh, I, like uh, I just like saying that. Like, this, 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 I'm this. stuck. I'm stuck in a. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was just like, yo, this guy, he he's perfect. He was perfect for that role. And, I'll, and that's one thing I try to tell like Junior. It's just like, yo, don't get so upset don't don't think about the you know goal because you might end up putting yourself in a first job that you'll absolutely hate or a first yeah. job that you're like nowhere near prepared for be or you know some type of crazy situation that you're not going to enjoy a little bad taste in your mouth right my first job and as a software engineer i ended up at a job where there was no one at the company that knew rails everybody was either php or net and I'm doing Rails, and so there was no one there for mentorship, right? As a junior, my closest mentor uh, was Daniel Pritchett, who was at Arubius at another company, and books, right? Books and videos. So I had to learn from books and videos, where I really would wish I had somebody that I could talk to that was in the same code base as me, which is why we made our code base open for Vets Code. Like I hated that, okay. right? I couldn't, I, you know, these are different source. code base. Oh yeah, we're open source. We always, um, I've always been pro open source because all the fun stuff really is open source, right? Like what I isn't open source that is fun? Like, and what's 
a better, I guess the best question is what's fun that isn't open source? Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, I've worked in closed source, but I, I, the reason why I like open source, well, I, I mean, forums open source, and I definitely just, I find it, there's so many things I like about open source, but just like you're literally doing your work in the open, any, literally anybody can come in. Obviously, there's sometimes, I, I've, I've rarely seen it happen in our code base, but I've seen in other open source code bases. You know, sometimes there's assholes that just happens, but in general. I think the the open source community has been pretty awesome. And I, I love, like, one of the reasons why I love working where I work is because I get to work with people in the community, you know? Like, I review, P like, because we review PRs of the internal team, but I'm constantly reviewing, you know, people from from literally anywhere over the planet, you know? And it's, it's really satisfying to help them out or guide them a certain way, you know? And it... You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. It doesn't help to get paid and work in open source. Like to me, that's kind of like <laughs> the dream. So uh, I'm definitely loving it. But uh, and it kind of ties into the marketing thing. Like, and what I was what I was gonna say before when I said it's unfortunate, what I meant was like as a new dev because there's so much stuff you have to do. You know, like because I'm definitely a big fan of learning public. And I mean, I started streaming on my own and I started pairing with folks from the dev community to do PRs to what, it, what was our code base. And then eventually I've I've made the, the stream we're on now became that. And that's like, it's part of my job now, which is pretty awesome, you know? Um, but oh. I got a lot of inspiration from like, I started streaming because of Jason Langsdorf. I saw what he was doing. I was like, that's cool. And all the the whole learn in public movement, it's existed for a while, but I think Sean Wang definitely popularized it and definitely he does a lot of great stuff in that space, you know, and I try to write more and stuff there too. And, you know, I have all this stuff, like you're saying, I mean, twi Twitter is definitely, I find the place for tech, like, you know, that's how I've met so many people. I have my Instagram, it's, you know, I post stuff, but it's mainly, you know, me working out. I built an ice rink this winter, you know, it's kind of more like that's what I do outside of work kind of. Well, see, that's the beauty of it, right? Like, I think, and that's where, like, I want to start getting towards, right? Us integrating the whole person, right? Like, okay, you power lift, you do, you know, you do ice rink. That's insane. Like, I can't build took me like a week to build the desk that I have, right? Like, I was like, mega desk. And I was like, this sucks. I wish I could have called somebody to do this. Uh, <laughs> like, yo, uh, the pandemic is like really hating on the player. Um, so I I did it, but I hated it the whole time. So like, that's impressive to me. And like, I see that, like, when you look at the whole you look at people's whole self, like you also see like differentialities in communities right like when you look at west coast devs and you hang out with them off time and they are in bars and stuff they talk about their side projects and code and stuff however when you go to like when you're southeastern region of the united states and you're talking to developers and what they're talking about is literally like what they're going to build outside or a grill or bar i know i literally if i can make a heat map literally every developer i know that can like throw down comes from like they're in like southeastern like who i know can let that will like if you went to their house like this weekend you will have a good time like with food all in like southeast united states because like everybody cooks like all the developers i know all the all the good developers i know they cook right they just they know how to cook right they know like i like they're like wow i'm just uh, one de uh, one DevOps guy I know, uh, he is on a professional barbecue team. Like, I didn't know that existed. What? <laughs> exactly, right? Like, he's like, yeah, we go and we go you know, professionally on the barbecue. Like, and you know, I had um Kevin uh, Zellman. He's a senior software engineer at uh, CBS, and this dude, he is a fan in his spare time of doing culinary science. And no one, and I mean, and, and you can challenge KZ, like go and find him on Twitter and challenge him. No one can out bake him. No one. He made these chocolate chip cookies and he got these chocolate, they weren't, they shouldn't have been called chocolate chips. They're definitely cheating. Get these chocolate chunks from France okay. and had them delivered. And he made these cookies and like they stayed in the break room 
and I was like, yo, it's been like four hours. Let me eat one. And they were still soft. And like, I, I swore I heard James Joyce. I was like, yo, this is amazing. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever liked. This is the best I've ever had. Like, I can't believe a dude would see us to grab these cookies. Like, you shouldn't even be here. You should not be here. You should have your own bakery. <laughs> like, that was that's like my experience, right? And then go to New York. Everybody in New York, can, all the devs in New York, is essentially drink you under a table. Like that's what I learned <laughs> in, in New York is that they all, all New York devs seem to drink heavily. Like I was like, oh, these guys are not healthy. Oh, like, yeah. Like the New Yorkers, they need like sponsors or something because that's not good. But everybody in Southeast, like every, Oregon, they they're all outdoorsy people. Colorado, and every time I talk to anyone from uh, Portland or Denver, like anyone from Colorado or, or Oregon area, all they talk about is what they're going to do outside. Like they're always hiking and stuff. Like, I'm like, I guess the vitamin D makes you smarter, but like, or snow, <laughs> snowboarding. No, I'm not doing that. Like, my, I don't have the needs for that. Um, like, Emily Freeman, she's like super strong, and I'm like, I don't, I'm not, mm, no, I don't have time to talk to you outside of work because all we talk about is like throwing buildings and stuff. I'm good, <laughs> like, mm -mm. like, can't, can't be friends with people that are doing protein shakes in my 30s. I'm chilling, so <laughs> I, I had a protein shake two hours ago, but I'm an old man, so uh, <laughs> see, I'm like, nah. I'm all like, I'm baby fever, like, I'm like, yeah, well, let's talk about. Toys like that you can get for kids and stuff. Like, I've literally been trying to go through and relearn, uh, um, relearn the all the games I get. I don't know yet. So, okay. Let me see. I think what has happened is my kids have jumped on their internet, like the teenagers have jumped on their internet stuff, and they're like affected by stuff. Uh, <laughs> That's fully believable. Yeah. Daddy's on uh, the street. Get off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I have to, and that's another thing. I have to set up all of that stuff still because we just necessarily have to set up all that stuff to make sure, like, they're never, like, we were the same internet, and now we are, and, like, this is horrible. And I just want to go downstairs and turn off the electricity, but I'm not going to do that. It's, you know, well, it's, bad. it's bad. What, <laughs> what I did is we, I, I have, like, a mesh router and for the Wi Fi, but, uh, I hardwired my office, so uh, so my connection is usually pretty solid. I think your kids might have actually killed your connection, so we're gonna hold on a sec. Ah, oh, you're back. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, uh, I don't know if you heard me. I'm back. Saying. Yeah, I think my kids have. Like... <laughs> you got you gotta you gotta release their IPs off the router. Just just bump. That's them. what I have to do. <laughs> I'll do that right now. Stand by one. Oh yeah, no worries. Copy um yeah what i do is i i just i ended up hardwiring my computer and you end up getting just a faster connection it doesn't you're not affected by the wi-fi so um but uh but yeah i definitely i definitely feel it when my kids yeah. Are on. yeah i'm gonna I, i'm feeling it right now i'm like yeah they're definitely they're crushing it on call of duty right now like are, we're doing this weird thing now where like the the county does it where they only on on wednesdays no class so monday tuesday class wednesday is nothing and that's regardless if you go live or remote wednesday okay. no class say friday class and i'm like ah, this sucks on some levels <laughs> uh because <laughs> now i have like two little people here like two teenagers here on video games okay. all day gotcha. like something constructive like on the middle in the in the middle of the work week asking for pizza and playing video games the entire time it's like it's like teenage ninja turtles go downstairs gotcha gotcha yeah my kids don't really play a lot of video games They're, i mean they play some occasion i have like an old xbox and they'll play like lego indiana jones every now and then but I, i've got like the I forget what you call it yeah, the connect there so where it follows you so it's it's like the older hmm. version of it, I guess. But they do like dance, dance, uh, you know, just dance or whatever and stuff like that. Just get the blood pumping. But usually they're just 
like my, my kids are going uh, in school right now. Like, uh, did you say yours are home for the pandemic still or? One is home, one is in school. Like he wanted to go in school and we realized that he's an extrovert, he's a social butterfly. So keeping him okay. in the house was driving us crazy. So we were like, <laughs> yeah, by all means, go be for it. Like yeah, just yeah. wash your hands and wear a mask. Thank you, love you, okay, thanks, bye. And the other one he realized, it's like, you know what, if I'm at home with the, with the parents all the time, my chances of getting Chick-fil-A during lunch, like, improves 100 percent, and i really love chicken nuggets so like i think the whole point whole reason that one chose to be remote was because lunch is better so yeah, yeah. like we got nuggets on the menu all right yeah i'll work from home yeah guys it's like wait no school lunch i mean i've never actually had chick-fil-a i don't think it exists in canada i've had no no i'm pretty sure it, it, it's all right be... it's not I'm one of those people that like, I'm kind of like, we get it for him, but it's like, I'm not a fan of getting it for him because I'm like, uh, these people, their CEOs kind of did some horrible shit when it comes to the LGBTQIA community. So I'm like, uh, cringe, here's my money. I don't like you though. I just know, like, you know, of all the companies that make a quality product, you're the pro you're the company I hate the most right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'm only doing this to keep a child quiet. So <laughs> just remember that. Like, if you ever hear this Chick Fil A, only reason I ever spend money on you is because for the kids. I once they get old enough, never ever again. So cool, cool. Um, what was I going to say? Okay, so yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I don't know if you wanted to talk about habits at all. Like, I, I can definitely, <laughs> I, I can, I can definitely relate to this. I mean, uh, I played university sports for years, like played rugby and like, you're just, you know, even working out, like that's habits to some degree, but like, I'm sure having been in the armed forces, there's definitely habits that get developed there. So. Uh, well, it's not just habits. It's about what's the best way to say this, right? I don't like if you ever read James Clear Atomic Habits, you know I'm a big fan of that. When it comes yeah. to habits, it's this ideal, right, of doing taking care of this, um, taking care of the small things so the big things take care of themselves, right? So like one thing that I see, especially with juniors, introverts, they're like, I don't know, I, I don't have like meaty enough projects. I'm like, well, if you're coding. Have you ever decided to spend 30 minutes on your, like your Monday just planning out what you're going to code? And then once you you know do that planning, you can spend the other 20 minutes on each day, yeah, yeah, building something towards that, right? So like that's the idea that I always have like with like you know what, just focus on you, know, you do the plan phase and then you come forward and you do a little bit every day and that's what a habit is right you know i try to tell them like no one built anything in like 30 minutes they just debuted it right like you look at every you know there's no such thing as hey you know what someone got famous fast or something like no this is years in the making no one made a big app no one made no one got the job like yeah. only like you're actually with boot camps and stuff like that you're even if you do um get a, if you get a job after a year or something you're still ahead of the curve of the average cs grad because they, they spend four years getting the degree and then they go out there on the job huh so it's like yeah. you have to think of it in that in those constructs of like what are the habits that you're building that's going to ensure you have success, right? Like my habits when I first started, I, I ever spent more than four hours learning how to code or doing code stuff when I first started, right? I yeah. spent two hours in the morning doing drills, like either going through a book or, you know, essentially going through a book or in the video for the first two hours. Uh, second two hours in the afternoon, uh, my four to seven, and on my 7 to 9 p.m., I would try to focus on my mastery, my 7 to 9 p.m. I would just, I would write or build or do, e or do emails or I would do the email, do a draft, put in draft, put a, a reminder on my phone to go and yeah. send that email in the morning and be done with it, right? Like every, even now, like Mondays are still my heavy email 
days, right? Yeah. If you want to get a good response from me, you need to reach out to me on Monday because I'm just in that habit of that's okay. when I'm going to talk to you is on Monday. Uh, <laughs> like if uh, if you don't reach out to me on Monday, your day, if you don't reach out to me on Monday, you don't have my number or you don't have any way, like you're not in my Slack, you're going to have a hard, hard time reaching out to me. Um, same concept with like learning with my writing, right? I know that like, for instance, I can't write on, any, on, on my dev machine, right? I know that for a fact my computer if I'm on my computer and I'm trying to write, it's never going to get done. So I have an iPad. That is the only thing I use it is writing. And I know that once I get that, I can go anywhere um, and I can write from there because I'm not going to be able to, you know, literally I'll write. Something will come in and, and like, I'm like, oh, what's that? Or someone hit me up Slack and it's saying, you know, it's been four yeah, hours yeah, triaging yeah, some yeah, code yeah. and you have 20 words. Uh, yeah. How real is about that? I don't tweet from my any machine beyond my cell phone because I know that if I start that, then that's going to take up my time, my machine. Yeah. My hands get on my keyboard. I try not to do anything beyond email and email teams code. Like, that's it, right? Because if I do it from Twitter, if I do it from my machine, then my machine, it becomes a part of the ecosystem here, right? So, yeah. like, I do these, like, separation of concerns, I guess, is what you would do, like, you know, yeah, come yeah. To, like, because Twitter is my primary um, communication tool. So I primarily um, tweet from my phone, because for me, that's easy. Um, yeah. it comes learning, when it comes to learning how to code, right? When I, right now, I'm learning Python, Python and Databricks. Yeah. First thing I do is I look at what uh, I, I have this as the military, uh, how I was trained was crawl, walk, run. Right. So I okay. do something basic that I can ask questions on and then I do something intermediate that I'm like less hand holding and more from the dome and less, you know, more asking, doing things on my own. Then I do something called like oh, shoulder run phase. I do something big. Right. And yeah. like that's what I did when I was like last month I learned .NET, but what I did was like I went through all the Microsoft .NET stuff, okay. and especially with their VS Code stuff because I needed to go through that for VS Code because I did not want to use Visual Studio at all. Like so okay. they I did all their basics for VS Code, and then I went through uh, Plural Site one that was for also wasn't just .NET but was also for, with Razor Pages and .NET, and okay. went through there and everything they did for. Then basically what I did for that was um, everything that was um, Visual Studio, I did it for Visual Studio Code. Okay. And I was like, you know what? Now I'm about to go crazy on them, right? So it's like I'm going to do a React app with TypeScript. Now that I got some fear in there. Like now we're going live because I never write TypeScript, uh, TypeScript okay. right? Because I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm old school. I'm like, I like JavaScript over TypeScript, right? And I'm yeah. like, oh, TypeScript is for like TypeScript and Tailwind are those two things that as a front end purist, I just don't do because I'm like, Tailwind is for Tailwind and for me, and in my opinion, Tailwind and TypeScript are for back end developers that want to do pretty UIs. Like, if you, I just don't write, uh, I don't even use uh, front end frameworks when I'm writing code for myself personally. So it's like, because I, I can do all that stuff on my own. And I can know, I know how to do all the utilities and things and when and where to do it. So having a utility focus is things like you know that's a lot of heavy lifting for what what people are doing and you might not need, need that right off the bat so let me see yeah. uh, what i need before i start implementing it the same with typescript i'm like eh, i feel like typescript's for it's javascript for backend devs i don't like it but then this time i was like you know what <laughs> like, i'm just gonna do it i'm gonna do typescript right so i did react typescript and then i was like you know what and then i'm gonna go build this .NET, use .NET as the API layer, and like okay. then I'm going to connect them, and boom, there you go. Then I'm going to use Azure, and I'm going to be able to push all this stuff up, because like that's well, it's really my job is to know how to do everything with Azure so I can work with other people and other companies okay. and do all this type of crazy stuff, right? So I was like, yeah, I did that. And then like my lead, he comes up, and he's like, oh, um, this project's going to be Python. I'm like, what? Okay, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> that's a great 
uh, I'm going to go and switch to whiskey now. Um, <laughs> I was doing so well on water, but now it's time to go something harder. Thank you. I just spent a month learning good stuff. Thank you. Uh, all right. Let me go scream in the pillow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's how I do it, right? That's my process, right? I start nice and basic, nice little piddly things, multiple small projects there. All like literally, first step uh, I do whenever I'm trying to learn a new language. Work um, or I, I like to say ecosystem with each language or ecosystem, right? So okay. I literally CD whatever that language and then put practice, and I start making projects in there. Okay. To GitHub, and then the projects get progressively harder. And then like that's and I start I start with the language, and then I go to the framework, and then I end with the ecosystem. And like and then trying to do a stretch goal of attach that ecosystem with something I already know. Like that's how I do it. But that's like, you know, I just like what's my crawl phase, what's my walk phase, what's my run phase? And okay. that's just how how I do it, right? And that's how you know it works for me because I know that, you know, I know that what I I'm I've already given myself grace. I'm not knowing this, which is one thing that the juniors and entry level developers do not, not do. They do not give themselves any for error. Okay. Like people would have been next year. So, like those are, but that's all the stuff. Like I think when it comes to making habits, it's just it helps you always have a game plan, and then it just helps you like relieve stress. You're not as stressed when you have habits. If you yeah. know what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Um, around a thing and not so much as like you know how do you know i don't do it minuscule like i do broad strokes but i just have okay. these you know I, I chunk it right but that's what the habits do right they make sure that you know make sure that I, like i said i have the grace and i don't i don't stress that part of my brain it's like oh no what's the plan what's the plan like, i already know the plan i've been doing the plan the whole time right so this is, you know, same way you go to the gym. Oh, my dog is barking. Uh, <laughs> uh, same way when you go to, you know, you go to the gym, if you want bigger biceps, so you you know, you know, you have to change your workout to yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. change to that. But you also know that, you know, I'm still you just got to go to the, like, I'm still going to go to the gym, right? You just, you know, you're tweaking things, right? Same yeah. game plan, different goals. Yeah. And it, and the thing too, like, I haven't finished Atomic Habits, which sounds kind of funny because I I have a bad habit of not finishing books or I buy books and I don't read them right away. I do the uh, one page rule, man. Yeah, yeah. I got to page, <laughs> I'm on page 49 of Atomic Habits and I will finish it. But uh, but I got to, I do like what they're saying, like don't set goals, set habits, because like and and you've obviously read the whole book, but I think that makes sense because like. I can speak from like, like I've had my weight, for example, my weight fluctuate a lot uh, after just like some bad injuries or whatever. Oh, I mean, for the pandemic, and, like we all have, brother. <laughs> oh yeah, well, yeah. Well, there's that too. But like, you know, what I mean, it's like I don't know. I think I blew up to I was like two forty at one point. I'm like five foot seven, and I'm like right now I'm like two fifteen. But like to get and I was like year and a half ago, I was like 195, but I, I literally went from like 240 to 195, but it was just being consistent, you know, like just train every day. And it's like bit by bit, you know, like initially you're like, nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden you see some small change and then it just keeps happening, you know? And then it's like, and it wasn't a goal so much as just like, just keep training, you know, keep, keep at it. And, you know, it just, you know, just have, I mean, there's other factors like diet and stuff too, but it, it was just being consistent about it. That's how I was able to do it, you know? So I can one thing I try to tell people that the beautiful thing about habits is you're not going to be the first person to see the results. One, but when you do, and when you do see the results of your work, you'll be like, oh shit, right? Like yeah. everybody deals with imposter syndrome. And then the job I have where you're literally going to be learning a new thing once a quarter, a new language, new ecosystem once a quarter. It's like, oh yeah. my God, like, am I good enough? But so when, uh, when, when my manager came down and he was like, we have to do this. I broke up for a second. 
Yeah, can you back? Yeah, you're back. All right, cool. So as I was, what I was saying, is like when I wrote the code that I had not written Python for years, right? Like yeah. literally four years, like at least. So I was like, yeah, it's been a long time since I wrote Python. Wrote Python and it worked. I was like, oh snap, I know what I'm doing. I'm a genius. I didn't have to look that up. That's all off the dome, son. What? And <laughs> so I was, I was like, I, was like, I feel like, is this how Eminem feels? Is this how like Lil Wayne feels when he's like in the, in the like, the studio? Is this what happens? And like, that's how it is. The people who is the people who see your capabilities are you're always going to be last. But that's what habits do is to prepare you for that. And when you do see the work of your habits, you're going to be like, oh, holy cow, I can't believe I did that. That's freaking yeah. awesome. I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to live stream everything now because I, now <laughs> I know that I can do enough. Right. So just it's super yeah. hilarious. Right. Like I, like I said, I laughed my, I left my ass off about it uh, after I got off. I was like, yo. I did that, didn't didn't look at anything, and I I did it. So that's what habits do, right? Yeah. They um they're a buffer, they're a protective layer, right? They keep you, you know, I guess what we say in the combat game is like stay ready so you don't have to get ready, right? You know, you know, like even now, like fitness changes for me. And as, as probably as it has yeah. for you, right? Fitness yeah. is not about, you know, fitness when I first used to work, it was like washboard abs, have it look good for ladies. Like, yo, I have to like, yo. Trying to like, I'm trying to you know be chosen out here in these streets. You know what I'm saying? And like now it's like I have to keep up with all these kids, right? Like that's what I have to do. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna have like he's like he's not even here yet, and I'm thinking like eventually he's gonna be two and he's gonna be outrunning everybody. I you know I do not have those knees back in the old days. Like yo, know, whatever like big and the stallion knees are, I do not have those. Like. <laughs> And dude, mm -mm. like I am in a like nice slow jog type of guy, so I have to right. get in shape so that way like, I can keep up with, this, with all the like you know there's two teenagers downstairs, I gotta keep up with them. Then there's gonna be a baby here, I gotta get ready to have the energy levels. So you get woke up at two o'clock in the morning for a sleeping baby, yeah. right? I have to change the diaper. My wife is doing all the work of incubating, so I have to rise to the occasion when the baby's here to make sure you know she can rest and stuff. So I'm like I you know. That's all I think about when it goes to fitness. Like I have to be able, which changes your your workout. You know, when you're doing your workouts, like all you're thinking when you're young, those habits still matter uh, for working out. But when you're young, you're thinking, oh, I get a, I get a nice big chest and big arms and nice back and look shirtless, so good shirtless. And now I'm like, no, full body because I need to be have the whole body work in unison. All the muscles work well, be proportionate. I'm not trying to spend any extra money on a bunch of like new shirts because I'm busting out on them because I like Hulk smash and stuff. And also, not, I'm not on protein or anything. I'm trying to get my food. I'm trying to get my calories the right way by like eating food that isn't bad for me because that's the other thing when you're 20 you can eat garbage right yeah. like you know it's like, like it's like you know going through tutorial hell right uh, when you're a coder it's like same way working out in your 20s like you just do everything and you eat whatever and good results happen so yeah. now it's all more structured and it's the thought process so like i have to make sure that i'm doing the right thing for this but like that, but the habit the big part of working out consistently is still there it's now just a how yeah. How and what, right? Like now it's like, oh, workout, cardio, stretch, flexibility. Like when you're for sure 20, you give crap about your flexibility. Like, all right, like, no, care. like you know. Yeah, no, I, I can totally I'm relate to that. I myself in bed. <laughs> yeah, because like when I was like when I was in my 20s in universal, like I played rugby for about like 14 years and I needed to be fast and I needed to be strong because it helped me play the game. So like I was always lifting like crazy weights and stuff. And nowadays I'm like, all I'm worrying about is I don't want to get injured and I want to have like good core, core strength. So I just don't hurt my back or something. And you know, I mean, if you end up looking good too, that, that that's great. But uh, yeah, all you care about is like not injuring yourself getting out of bed when you get past 30. Like, I just yeah. don't want, I just want to know where the pain is coming from. I know, I just want to even know 
what I did. Did I deserve this injury? Did I earn this injury? No. Yeah, you yeah, slept yeah. the wrong way, and now your neck hurts for two days. Like, ugh, this sucks. <laughs> I, I, I will tell you a very funny story. I went to bed one night. I woke up in the morning, and I couldn't walk. And I'm like, what the hell? I, I literally rolled my ankle in my sleep somehow. I have no idea how. But I mean, full disclosure, I have broken my right ankle and I chipped my left and I've had like hundreds of sprains probably. But I, I was still like, really? Like I went to bed. Like how did I injure myself sleeping? But does you know? rolling your ankle require help from gravity though? Like you had to put weight yeah. on it. Like Yeah, I don't know what no happened. Maybe, <laughs> maybe there was like some mysterious physio that just like yanked it or something. I don't know. Anyways. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyways. Um, I was going to say, we're hitting about 225 now. Uh, we usually go for about an hour and a half. I got to tell you, like, I'm loving chatting with you. I could probably chat with you literally the rest of the day, probably. Uh, but, but unfortunately, you can't do that. But, um, and I think you're a little frozen. I'm not sure. I can't tell. Yeah. I think you froze. Okay. I'll wait till you're back in a sec. Um, I'm going to take this moment while Jerome unfreezes. Um, Christina, if you have a chance, if you can drop the bug smash uh, link in the chat. Um, so Dev2 is having their first bug smash ever. Uh, it's, it's a fun way to help improve the code base, get some um, experience in open source, and uh, you know, uh, meet people in the community uh, you'll probably end up talking to me or christina in in pull requests or in issues or other folks on the team so definitely check that out um i'm hoping that jerome will come back because he didn't hear anything i said in the last minute there but um like i was saying folks um we are hitting it's like 225 right now hopefully Jerome can make it back in a minute here. Uh, I'm guessing his kids went all in on Call of Duty and and killed his internet. But um, yeah, no, we're having some great combos here. Uh, just to kind of recap, um, so we, we talked about Vets Who Code, which is a, a really great organization that Jerome started to help out veterans in terms of get, getting into the workplace and the tech, uh, you know, programming and all that. Um, we've been talking about habits and just, you know, uh, stuff you need to do too as a developer these days, you know, just get yourself out there, whether that's blogging, you know, you've got, you know, you're out on Twitter, you got your LinkedIn going on. There's, there's all kinds of things you need to do these days, but, um, yeah. And then we've just been talking about habits. Um, Jerome's a big fan of the book Atomic Habits. Uh, I don't know if you could maybe drop that there, Christina, uh, if folks want to check that out. Um, uh, funnily enough, like I mentioned, um, I've only on page 49 of Atomic Habits and I've been stuck on there for like a couple months because I am terrible when it comes to reading books, but I will complete it at some point. Uh, I'm going to hang out here for a minute or two because uh, I'm hoping Jerome can come back to say bye. Um, but Christina's just dropping uh, all of Jerome's links there if you want to check it out. Definitely give him a follow on Twitter. Uh, he's on Dev2 as well. Uh, there's also Vets Who Code on Twitter. Uh, I'm just going to check my Twitter to see. Yeah, he lost his connection, I think. No, we're still on. It's live. <laughs> Maybe your internet died. Just trying to get, uh, just trying to get Jerome back on here. Um, just going to see here. So. Let's just see here. Yeah, we're still going. So uh, yeah, all right, he's coming back. Cool, cool. Awesome. Just give it a sec here. All right, cool. So Jerome's just popping back on here. Do, do, do. We got the uh, Discord, two little cubes there just spinning around. Me, I'm just improvising. Uh, I'll go back to my mime stuff. I'm stuck in a box. I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, hopefully Jerome just connects here in a second and just we're going to wrap up. Uh, I want to thank thank him and just uh, we've already kind of recapped what we've gone over, but uh, we'll give him a sec here. See what he's saying in the Twitter DMs.
Um, okay. Um, all right. I'm just going to see if we can try again. Uh, okay, cool. Well, this is, uh, <clears throat> I will say, uh, part of the beauty of live streaming. Stuff does go wrong sometimes, so uh, it's all good. Um, yeah, he's trying to connect. Okay. Um, if he doesn't... Uh, okay. I see... Uh, weird. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, just doing a quick technical here. And um, just going to try and get him back on. All right. Well, <clears throat> anyways. Um, Jerome's just, uh, like I said, going to try to connect again. Um, just going to tell him he's trying to connect here again. Hey. All right, you're back, man. I hear I you. Am? I don't see you, but I hear you. Ah, there we go. All right, I am back. Look at that light. Let me. All this stuff. <laughs> I have no idea what I have it. It's all good. I, I did some improv and I probably, and I said like your kids probably took down your internet with Call of Duty. So <laughs> that is probably accurate. I was like, wait, everything um, is, says it's working. That's not. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure when you cut out, but uh, I was saying we we're, we're kind of getting uh, close to the end of our, our stream time. So um, I just wanted to say like, thanks a ton. And what I was saying before, when you cut out was I could honestly probably talk to you like the rest of the day, but, uh, <laughs> we that's, all the, have to that's work. the goal, right? Like that's the goal yeah, yeah. is especially like this year for me, the goal is bringing the whole self, like, especially with everything. Like I, like I write, I'm regularly on dev too. I actually have a, let me see if I can pull up the, the like, you're going to love this. I have a story I'm about to drop called, um, about my productivity stack and we already have the graphic for it done and it's it's a whole vibe like i don't know what to say about it other than are you dropping it in the, the twitch chat or in the discord for me to i was thinking about just sharing my screen if you wanted to oh yeah yeah go ahead man yeah for sure yeah so here, let's uh, share the screen. Let's do it. Let's watch. All this. right. How about? Can I see it? All right. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. Uh, yes. I see Black Captain America, and I. I love. I love the logo on Cap. There. That's pretty awesome. Yes, we've been. Like, it took us like a month to do this, and I've been very happy. I was like, oh, I absolutely. And we had see. Crash Dev 2, Red C Code, like we're doing all this stuff to make sure that regardless where it's at, people know that, you know, that's uh, Dev 2 is where we're putting it at originally. Um, well, I'm, my, I'm seeing your Discord stopped. screen now. <laughs> we're getting yeah, some I was trying going. to stop. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I can stop before. Uh, uh, there, I'll close the stream. Cool. Yeah, we're back. There we go. Uh, yeah, no, that's some really okay. great yeah. art. That, that looks amazing. Yeah, I have uh, have about, I think we are at 10, right? I have like 10 articles ready to go. It's just okay. when I am, like I've been skilling up with Microsoft and I've been teaching at Vetsu Code. So all of my fun stuff, like writing and platforming has like, oh, I took it in the back seat, but now I'm like, oh, I'm super <laughs> excited. And even with like these things, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, just go find me on Dev2 and you'll see all the other, you know, weird, yeah. like all the, you know, the techie thing. But like, these are like, this is the opportunity I get to enjoy meeting you beyond like Twitter and Instagram. Cause I think I'll follow you on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> like, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to Canada either. anytime soon. <laughs> it, uh, it's, it's not, it's, it's cold. Yeah, I like it. It's not that bad. I'm in Montreal and honestly, the weather here in the summer is, it goes up to like, uh, 
in Fahrenheit, it's like 100 degrees. It, like it gets really hot here and humid in the summer. It's the equivalent of being in like the south in the summer here. Not as hot as North Carolina because I've, I've been there before and I made the mistake of parking my car not under the house, but like in the in the driveway or like the parking spot. So like the sun just like I sat in the car and I like practically burnt my butt when I sat down. Uh, but uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yo, man, you got to be careful with that southern heat, man. That's no joke yeah, out yeah. here. Um, but yeah, like I was going to say, um, we're going to wrap up for now, but I, I would definitely love to have you again on the stream at some point because, like I said, I could probably talk to you literally till nighttime. Um, but uh, I do have to actually get some work done today. Um, but yeah, so if, if you're ever down for coming on again, we'd definitely love to have you. Um, Christina has dropped links to your Twitter and to the Vetsu Code Twitter. Um, we, I dropped a link to Atomic Habits too. Uh, sorry, Christina did. Uh, I don't know if there's any other links you want to share with us before we uh, head uh, out. Or the Practical Dev Vetsu uh, Code link. I think okay. that's a good, you know, because that's where that's not only where I write it, but most of our troops they write there as well. Okay. Like we we are. That's the place, like when our when our veterans, when we talk about learning how to um, uh, be a better writer, that's where we send them, right? And this is okay. You know, this is the place. So let me make sure. I've, I've let me got it here. You. Oh, I good. See, I'll, I'll, I'll drop it in the links. I'm in the matrix. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll drop that too. Uh, so yeah. that's the vets who go I, you know, and dev too. And that way, you know, just don't follow what I'm writing, right? You know, you get a good level of like what our students are writing and how, what they're learning. And, you know, David Tetro, who's doing a, like, I think he's doing like a hundred articles on a, you know, vanilla JavaScript that he's trying, like, that's his goal. I was like, yo, that's a crazy goal. It's like, yeah, cool, yeah. whatever. Uh, you know, Schuster, he does, you know, he writes, he pontificates. He doesn't even write. That's how I'll say. He doesn't even write. He pontificates about different subjects of uh, like learning when it comes okay. to code, whether it's a JavaScript or PHP. Same with Tim. Uh, Tim Apple, which is fun. We have a veteran named Tim Apple uh, who actually got kicked off of Twitter because they thought he was a fake. Uh, he was a okay, bot okay. because. Uh, uh, last president called uh, Tim from the the guy from Apple called him Tim yeah. Apple, and they were like, "Oh no, this is a fake person." He's like, "No, that's my real name. Here's my driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> like, here's my birth certificate. Please let me back in." <laughs> like, y'all, Twitter just really uh, legit kicked you off the uh, internet because of a president making a, a mistake. <laughs> like, I've never thought that the day would happen, but that that's happened. wild, fam. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that man, I I think that I think that's a good way to to leave things with a funny note. But definitely would love to have you back again on the stream, Jerome. Uh, we we got a few folks coming on in, in the next few months, but maybe later on in the year if you're down, or or even maybe some folks from Vetsu Code too. Maybe maybe we'll do a mishmash, uh, get a few folks on here. So cool. I think you froze again, man. Uh, I'm gonna say bye to everybody. Thanks again, Jerome. Really loved this talking with you today. And we will see you next week on the stream, folks. Take care. And yeah, we're back next week.